If you've been watching any of the Rattle Can channels, you'll know I'm a simple guy. I like a tall truck with a commanding view of the road, not a lot of bells and whistles on it, and I like people to leave me alone because I got stuff to do in the shop. But when you see a need, you fill a need. And the need we're going to talk about today involves this little car, me, Mrs. Rattlecan, and a bunch of miles on the road. Stand by. So our son used to live here in Tucson, Arizona, and then he joined the Navy, and they sent him to school way up here in Connecticut, and it would be nice to have a car. So Mrs. Rattlecan and I decided that we would help him out, and we hopped on a plane in our home of Dayton, Ohio, and zipped across the country for a short stop in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, where we visited a friend of ours, Wolfgang Puck. We don't, we, we don't actually know Wolfgang Puck, but we ate at his restaurant and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, so a short time after that, we hopped on another plane and zipped out of Dallas, Fort Worth and into the old Pueblo known as Tucson, Arizona. And here we did the normal tucson -y things. We visited our son and his girlfriend, now fiance, and they have bought a house. So, you know, we did some stuff on the roof and we did some stuff with the HVAC and we did some stuff in the electrical realm because, well, that's just kind of what we do. And then we drove up to Phoenix, met some good friends that we had uh, spent some time with over in Japan. Then we started preparing our son's vehicle for the trek uh, to Connecticut. And here's a helpful hint. Uh, if you're having problems sourcing a windshield washer fluid connection, you can find one at Ace Hardware. It's just located in the drip irrigation department. It is entirely possible that my son has inherited an instrument collection propensity uh, but while we were there, we also did a uh, interview with the band that he is in and talked about their gear. And then we relived my old glory days and we helped them load in for a show where they opened up for a band who was currently on a nationwide tour called Soulfly. So enjoy a short clip of his band, Never Reborn. No trip to Tucson is complete without a visit to Luke's Italian Beef and their killer meatball sub sandwich. And we also stopped down and visited my friend uh, John Malajak and uh, did an interview with him about fabricating and how to get into the fabrication scene. And we got a sneak peek at his car that was going out to the SEMA show in Las Vegas. And of course, a visit wouldn't be complete without learning the personalities and the parts that you shouldn't put your hand near for the cats living in our son and his girlfriend's house. It's about to be some fun. A little bit of fun. We are in Tucson, Arizona, and the sky is sad because it is crying. And uh, today we are driving to... Uh, Roswell, New Mexico. Hampton. On the first day of a three and three quarters of a day drive back to the Ohio. So we might see something along the way. We might not. Alien abduction, not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> and like most good stories, this one started, well, at a hardware store. At least that's where the map starts out. So we hit the interstate and we got to you know, marvel at the desert, uh, even though it was overcast and it was raining, it was uh, quite interesting. And, uh, you know, we've lived in Tucson for a while. Um, you know, we spent a couple of years there. I was actually born there, uh, but it's, it's always nice driving through the desert 
and just seeing something that you haven't seen in a while. And if you've never driven through the desert, you should treat yourself and take a drive through the desert someday. So um, we saw something that we had never stopped at before for one reason or another. And so we decided that even though um, we had just kind of started our journey, we were gonna, gonna make a quick pit stop. So first rest stop of the day, we're, I don't know, about an hour east of Tucson at a place called Texas Canyon. And the weather is freaking glorious. Uh, trying to shield the microphone from the wind because there is a, um, you know, it's monsoon season and they've had a killer monsoon this year. And uh, there is, you know, we drove through some showers, and right now it is, it is 66 degrees, and the wind is blowing. My wife is hating it. Mrs. Rattlecan is not happy right now uh, with the weather. I am just digging life, and we can see. Let's pan over here a little bit more. We just got. Overcast, gray skies, you know, the, the sun is just not hammering us, because that's, that's what we were expecting. We were expecting to just be beat to death by the sun, and so far, it's not been that way. Uh, the further east we go, I think we'll, we'll, get, we'll get out of this system more so, and, and into the sunshine, but man, it's a, it's a beautiful day to be driving through Arizona right now. So after a, a quick stop here, we decided to get back going. This is not a, a normal trip, I guess, uh, I guess we would call it, because um, we're trying to get from point A to point B uh, as quickly as we can. And, you know, we're, we're of the, the age now and, you know, at the station in life where you know, we're, we're starting to take those trips where, you know, you're not driving 8, 10, and 12 hours uh, at a time because you have to get from one point to another, even though this is one of them. Um, and so, of course, no uh, stop across the desert uh, is complete without a quick stop at uh, a tourist destination. And by the way, this Buick, not for sale. So again, we're just trying to pound miles out, but Mrs. Rattlecan, uh, she loves uh, her national parks. So uh, she has kind of kind of had her eye on this one that, that we have not visited in the past. We, we crossed out of Arizona, we crossed uh, into New Mexico, and we made a quick stop at the White Sands uh, National Monument where we, um, you know, enjoyed the sand and stuff.
enough of that. Time to get back on the road. Uh, we have got to snake our way to the northeast. We are going to have to cross over that mountain range so that we can get into the, I, I don't know what you would classify it, the high desert of, uh, of New Mexico and uh, making our way in toward our destination for the first day, uh, the bustling little bird of Roswell. And uh, a pattern which became um, pretty, pretty common for us over the next few days is you pull into a town uh, at sunset, get checked into your hotel room, go find something to eat, come back and just kind of, you know, decompress. Or, you know, for for me, it was try to download uh, all the cameras, get everything organized, to try and make my life a little bit easier when we decide to put all this footage into, well, what you're watching right now. So it is the end of day one. Tucson, Arizona to Roswell, New Mexico. We've gone 465 miles and always the nurse, Mrs. Rattlecand, found someone that needed a mask. Let's get some sleep. All right, you're on. Morning, day two. Not a lot of extra content from beautiful downtown Roswell, New Mexico. There was no abduction. There was no probing. So today we are through New Mexico, a skosh of Texas, and then to Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's supposed to be nothing but high clouds intermittent with blue skies. No weather for like the next two days, but we'll see. On this day, there was just a lot of, well, straight roads, desert, and uh, something that we noticed uh, quite a bit, especially on this particular day, was the amount of train traffic. Uh, it was it was just train after train after train uh, on the southern side of our route and uh, you know we're having problems you know getting things um, boy it wasn't for the lack of effort with uh, with these trains because they were just loaded up with uh, you know more connexes than, than you could really count the other thing that we learned on this trip is there is something called a turnpike in uh, Oklahoma and you can go 80 miles an hour. That's pretty darn cool. So you know, not a lot to, uh, to really see uh, along the way. Uh, we you know, pulled up to the hotel, you know, kind of kind of feeling like you've been beat uh, a little bit. Uh, this car drives um, a little bit different than uh, the, you know the Super Duty uh, that I'm used to. So you know we're kind of learning the car and, and learning you know the, the eight gozillion features uh, that it has going for it. But we finally pulled up into the hotel uh, the end of day two. This was Roswell, New Mexico to Tulsa, Oklahoma, 575 miles. And so far we have driven a thousand and forty miles and let us get some sleep. The sleep has been gotten. Today we're headed towards Terre Haute, Indiana. And things are starting to look green. Um, well, greener 
and more familiar, if that's a word. Um, let's take a moment for a public service announcement. All right, next day we are Tulsa, Oklahoma to Terre Haute, Indiana, and we are on the I-44 Turnpike at the service area, and uh, there is a, I don't know, uh, a scented presence that is a mixture of rancid hot dog water and perhaps ground up fermenting uh, livestock feed, uh, and it is exceedingly unpleasant. So, uh, you know, if the service that operates the service station or the uh, service area on I-44 in Oklahoma is uh, paying attention to this, it stinks. So something uh, I would be remiss in mentioning is that all along the route that we are taking, we see signs for Route 66 museums and rest areas and stuff like that and that is in case you don't know at one time a very popular travel route from Chicago to Los Angeles and there are all kinds of little mom-and-pop museums and areas along the way where you can look at cars and, and read about the route and how it was important to you know commerce and fun and travel and vacations and all kinds of stuff like that um, back um, before and during actually the construction of the uh, the Eisenhower interstate road system so I mean even here we have got a little route 66 gas pump that you can have your picture taken next to um, I and mean, this is well, this is the children's play area, and this is one of the rest areas that we have just stopped at. So, um, if you're looking for something fun to do, check out and see if you are close to one of the, the remnants of the old Route 66, and uh, give that a shot. Now, this, this next little clip, I'm... I'm almost reluctant to put this in here. Um, uh, if, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not in the YouTube making business, then you're probably, uh, you know, unaware of the fact that channels will work really hard to um, reach the audience that they feel that they need to reach, and in some instances. Uh, that means that you are trying to keep a, uh, let's say, a, a family-friendly rating with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, so you know you can you can see a lot of trash, uh, you know, on the interwebs uh, with all kinds of language and stuff that you know most people don't want their kids to see. So uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I grew up with. The Three Stooges and Mel Brooks and Police Academy and and you know every once in a while or, or maybe more frequently um, you know life is enriched you know by a good fart joke um, but as far as the YouTubes uh, you know we're trying real hard to maintain our family friendly content so when my prim and uh, proper wife said uh, we have to go visit this place um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard to just lay down the miles and, um, but the, the saying goes, you know, happy wife, happy life. So I, I'm just going to let you enjoy the sights of this location, uh, in Missouri. And I'm not even gonna, going to utter it, um, just because again, I'm trying really hard um, I don't even know how, how auto captioning um, would do this. Uh, so we're just gonna err on the side of caution. I'm gonna reluctantly have my picture taken at a couple of different places, and then uh, we are going to move on.
so for the most part, when we're we're able to, we have been stopping at at Shell gas stations because you know we've we've got a Shell card and and uh, you know we think it's it's a, a little more secure if you are you know using a, a credit card uh, to avoid uh, you know skimmers and such um, as you're driving across the country if you're using just a gas card. Uh, because if that gets compromised, it's just a gas card, um, and it's a, a little easier to manage. But uh, proof positive that I have married the greatest woman in the world, um, and I know all husbands say that about their wives, or at least they should say that about their wives. Um, I have proof that this is true. As we are filling up at this gas station, Mrs. Rattlecam looks over at me and she says, I think there's a car show across the street. And of course my eyes get really big and I'm like, what? And she said, uh, I hear something. And then I saw kind of a hot rod pull in uh, around this city square. And sure enough, there was a car show that has been held monthly uh, the last Saturday of the month during the summer and we stumbled across it and i think as a reward for suffering through the previous uh entertainment event uh, we decided to take a little bit of time and see the sights so uh never let luck uh prevent you from having a good time here we are in beautiful downtown Highland, Illinois, where we stopped to get gas at a gas station. And I don't know if you can tell, we'll start at the edge of this city block. It's all hot rods and show cars. All the way around this, it's like a city square. And all around the periphery, they've got the, they've got the, the roads blocked off and it's all cars. So we're gonna go see some cool cars. You may or may not have sensed a bit of excitement in my voice. I I dig cars. I really do. Um, but uh, Jill and I had never been to something like this together. So these are photos that she took. These are the things that, you know, that kind of caught her eye, caught her fancy. And um, I found out that she likes shiny cars. Uh, she likes red cars. And uh, if you are looking at, um, you know, trying to procure one of those, um, she likes cars that have some fairly substantial numbers to them. So uh, it, I used it as a, as a learning opportunity to show her some of the, the cars that were not in that good shape and that, that a lot of people, when they're getting into hot rods, that's how they do it is they is they have a car that is not in fantastic shape and they put a lot of, you know, uh, they put a lot of time, uh, a lot of money, and a lot of sweat equity into getting something that they may have found in a barn or a junkyard or a field somewhere into um, uh, the shape of the cars that she thought were exceedingly nice. Uh, so the end of uh, a particularly long day, because we had made those stops, uh, this was day three, Tulsa, Oklahoma to Terre Haute in the Indiana, 562 miles. And so far we've done 602 miles. Good night's sleep, hearty breakfast on the road again. Going to be a short-ish day, but we have decided that we're tired of the interstate. So instead of a, a, a route that we have traveled a number of times, which is, you know, uh, 70 from Indianapolis into Dayton, we decided to take two lane highways, which is uh, an enjoyable experience for us. Well, good morning to you. It's our last day of the trip back home from Arizona, and uh, we're tired of driving on the interstate. Mrs. Rattlecan and I have had this discussion that there's just not much to see. So we are currently in Rushville, Indiana, and we are taking state route 44, which will cross the border into Ohio, turn into State Route 725. And so now we're just doing scenic driving. Lots of nice old houses, lots of quaint small towns. 
lots of big, cool old cars. Uh, so, last stretch home, and we may make a detour and see oldest daughter because we're actually driving right by uh, where her university is located. I think I can speak for both Mrs. Rattlecan and myself in saying that if we are driving for pleasure, this is the way we're going to do it. You know, if we've got to get from point A to point B and we've got to do it as fast as possible, you know, usually the interstate uh, is the way to do that. But this is just, this is what I think of when I think of road trips. We're finally getting very close to home, and uh, we're happy about that. Uh, it has been, uh, it, it's been a nice, you know, it's been a tiring four days. It's been a nice four days. Uh, this was, um, this was the, the end of Terre Haute, Indiana to Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it was only uh, 196 miles, and that brought our trip total to 1,798 miles. And uh, I know that both of us were looking forward to sleeping uh, in our own beds and uh, for a, a very short period of time, getting back into the routine that uh, is, is our daily lives. So it's often said that we make plans and God laughs because he kind of knows what's coming down the pike. The plan uh, as we had originally envisioned it is that we were going to take our son's car from Tucson, Arizona up to him in uh, Connecticut. And uh, since we had made it to Ohio, what we had planned on doing was just leisurely taking a couple of days uh, to get up to see him and, you know, spending a few days there and uh, being able to, you know, visit and then leisurely make our way back. But circumstances um, didn't work out that way. Uh, instead, what was going to happen was we had to get up there in a day. We were going to have a couple of days to visit and then we had to get back in a day because we had tradesmen in the house up until it was time for us to leave and then we had tradesmen coming into the house the day after we got back so um, it, it, the plan that we had for this trip just went right down the toilet and then it became it became a mad rush again instead of just leisurely going from place to place it turned out to be another get from point A to point B just as fast as you can So the night before we left, it had just poured down rain. And so we ended up uh, leaving uh, Ohio, kind of dealing with the leftovers of that uh, front that had moved through. Now the nice thing was it gave us a uh, pretty nice sunset. And then I don't know what's up with this guy um, who uh, apparently that car didn't come with a uh, cruise control and uh, he apparently liked to stop in the middle of the interstate for some reason uh, and then we also got to deal with some uh, uh, some uh, intermittent fog on our way uh, from we're going to go through Ohio up through Pennsylvania and then uh, once we reached Scranton we were going to make the uh, the big dive uh, down towards uh, New London Connecticut
Well, we've been through um, Western Pennsylvania before, but it was it was much more up towards the north. And you know, originally we were uh, we were really looking forward to going through um, you know this part of the country that that we have not spent. Um, uh, you know, time in uh, on secondary roads, going through, you know, little towns and villages, um, kind of like we did on that last day um, of our trip from uh, the Terre Haute into uh, Dayton. But you know, it's not the way that it was uh, it was going to be. But the trees were starting to change, and so we did get to enjoy, um, you know, a, a little bit uh, of the fall foliage. We've been exceedingly fortunate on this trip so far that we have not really run into very much traffic at all. Part of that's just because of the, you know, the, the time of the day that we've been traveling, the locations that we've been traveling. But you know, it's it's not really a it's not really a road trip until you run into, you know, until you run into something. And uh, you know, considering that uh, that would be the worst part of our day, you know, we'll take that. So we're, we're on this last little leg that is taking us through a fairly built up uh, area of the country. I mean, we've been there for a few hundred years, so we've had time to pack all the empty spaces full of stuff. But uh, good news is we're almost at the end of day five, Dayton to Groton, 757 miles, and that brings the total for our trip up to this point at 2,555 miles. It's always good to see your kids, you know, doing well and kind of living life. And, you know, there is no love like a mother's love. Um, and there is no love like, well, coffee in the morning. And so we decided to try and make uh, the best of our time uh, in this area. There is a naval museum right uh, at the entrance to the sub base that is open to the public. And we were able to, uh, you know, kind of experience a little bit of what that was like. Uh, we were able to get out and, uh, you know, see the sights in the area and uh, experience those and you know one of those sites is well traffic uh, you know I, I've heard tales about uh, the traffic in the Northeast and uh, unfortunately if you are uh, in the town uh, of Mystic on a Saturday uh, there's traffic all over the place uh, but again you know if that's the worst part of our day you know we're we're doing okay and you know you may you may see a, a theme kind of developing here because we're headed to uh, we're headed out to, uh, to eat and uh, you know we're in a part of the country that we have not been in before uh, apparently lobster is the stuff that dreams are made of so we went to um, you know, we went to a at least a highly recommended um, seafood restaurant right on the water and uh, it was lobster all around. Um, hey, they even put lobster on a grilled cheese sandwich, you know, which is kind of my style. And uh, we also uh, visited a place called Fort Griswold Battlefield. 
and this is a just kind of a scenic look uh, from a viewpoint if if you are in the area there is no shortage of stuff to do um, and 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 that covers I mean just anything um, if you are a history buff uh, you are going to love this area of the country because you you just can't I mean, you can't throw a rock without hitting something that is, uh, you know, that has some link to the history uh, of this country, especially during the time uh, of the Revolutionary War. Mrs. Rattlecan enjoys her informative signs and uh, artifact displays, and there are tons of them uh, just at this just at this one state park. Um, there's just, just no shortage of things to look at. Uh, the, again, as, as you've been seeing, the view of the river, uh, you know, uh, is, is just fantastic, you know, with the ferries uh, coming and going, and the displays on the inside, um, the structures that you can see of this uh, Revolutionary War fort. Uh, there's a, they've got an aquarium there, and aquariums are nice. And Mrs. Rattlecan loves her jellyfish. So we get to make the attempt at uh, trying to capture the elusive jellyfish photo. And then uh, one of the things that, that we enjoy most of all is just getting to spend time, uh, you know, with one of our children and, uh, you know, playing board games and you know, just watching TV and, and having pizza and, and just hanging out. Um, because there's no, you know, at that moment, there's no agenda. It's just hanging out and, and, and being able to, um, uh, you know, see the excitement and see, um, you know, you know, how much, you know, something that you and, you know, your spouse have brought into this world and, and, and worked hard to raise in a way that you hope, uh, you know, will do them and society some service. And, you know, I, I think we're, I think we're pretty close on that. So it's the last day, the really last day of our big grand adventure of trying to get our son's vehicle to him. Uh, we drove the same 757 miles back home, uh, the same, you know, variable weather. That was a good trip. We got to see some stuff that we hadn't seen before. We got to see some friends along the way. We got to make some new friends. Uh, along the way and then uh, as kind of an added bonus uh, we had just a, a beautiful sunset uh, that we got to drive into uh, as we were uh, headed back uh, into Ohio but we were happy because it signaled the end of day six uh, which was our um, route from Groton Connecticut back to Dayton Ohio 757 miles uh, the total mileage for that trip 3,312 miles um, and if we had to you know, we would do it again you know for any of our other kids well I hope you've enjoyed uh, this I don't know what you want to call it a video log of our travels uh, if you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you got something nice to say, throw it in the comments down beneath the sermon notes. If there's sites along the way that you think we, uh, you know, we should go back and visit when we're able to take a leisurely trip, um, you know, be sure to be sure to put those down uh, in the comments as well. There is going to be uh, a more technical video coming up just on how um, you know how we filmed this stuff. Uh, because it was quite the uh, kind of quite the technical endeavor to get everything lined up. And, and I know that there are some people who, who like that type of stuff. Anyways, again, give us a like if you liked it. Uh, give us a comment if you uh, think there's something that we missed. If you look in the comments, uh, there will be a link to all three uh, of the channels um, uh, so that you know you can find uh, you know something that you enjoy. Uh, whether it be guitar building, whether it be, you know, metal fabrication or whether it be, you know, working on a working on an old house. Anyways, I'm James 
And uh, Mrs. Rattlecan and I, thank you for hanging in there. You guys have a great day. Cheers. I hope you found this episode educational or entertaining or maybe even both. You might want to check this one out as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you've got comments, make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Rattlecan Fab Shop. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.